Hey y'all, Steve Bailey here. Uh, one thing that I have been trying to perfect in all my years of playing bass is recording the double bass. The upright bass, the doghouse bass, the uh, bass fiddle, the bull fiddle, and I'm sure we have a lot of other names that we can't say in public for this beast. One of the biggest problems I've always had with it has been recording it properly and trying to get a big sound and, and get all the, the tonal nuances of it that, uh, that often elude us when, we, when we're miking it. This bass is an old Czechoslovakian kind of solo instrument. It's a tiny instrument. That's why I picked it for this demonstration because it is the most difficult one to get a big tone. And um, I uh, have stumbled upon some miking techniques that I want to share with you. Typically, when I go in the studio and um, somebody brings in a mic, they'll bring in a nice condenser microphone. Today I'm using the SCX 25A by Audix. Beautiful, warm, full spectrum microphone that is just a great all purpose mic um, used uh, like some other uh, brand mics that I'm not going to say on here, <laughs> but the big, expensive, expensive ones. And we place it usually about a foot and a half off the F hole uh, on the G string side. Now, that usually produces a nice tone, but let's make it nicer. And this is, these are the kind of alternate techniques that I've stumbled upon to use additional microphones. Um, I use an M1280, and here's something. I take a piece of acoustic foam, cut it into a, uh, that's not a triangle, that's a rectangle, and uh, then I punch a hole through it. I don't cut a hole out of it, but I punch a hole through large enough that I can insert the capsule of the mic and get it all the way through and have it protrude out the other side about, you know, a half an inch or something like that. So I take that whole thing, insert the foam into the F hole about halfway in and out, and then carefully just kind of work the microphone into there. And I know how far my thumb needs to go in for it to protrude out. So now it's sticking inside of the cavity of the bass. Uh, I get a lot, you say, it's going to be a huge tubby sound. Well, it's not. It, it's, it's a warm, fat sound when used in conjunction with another mic really adds an adds a amount of presence to it that's beautiful. Lately, I've also stumbled upon this technique watching trombone players, saxophone players, trumpet players use these clip-on mics. And I found a place on the bridge in between the A and the D string where I can clip this. This is also an Audix uh, uh, clip-on system. And using an M1250, another phantom-powered condenser mic, these are all phantom-powered, uh, in this shock mount, I place it right about there. Why do I do that? I want some string noise, I want some finger noise off of the strings, and all combined, uh, what a luxury to have three tracks to record bass. Um, usually I only get one when I'm going to record for somebody else, but, but here in my studio, the aim is perfection, and perfection in recording. I don't have phasing issues on this mic um, configuration. I'm not sure why I don't, uh, I just don't. I would expect some, but haven't experienced any yet. Just recorded a, a straight ahead jazz album in here a couple of weeks ago and this configuration worked beautifully. Uh, the only problem with this mic for, for finger noise is you can't use it if you're going to be playing Arco and that's not an oil company that means you're playing with a bow. So I, I take this one off and still get an, a nice even tone with those two. So we have the uh, M1250 here the M1280 here inside of uh, some acoustical foam which is wedged into the F hole on the G string on the high side and then we have the uh, SCX 25A here catching the sound off the body and the the uh, overall characteristics of the instrument. So I'm going to play a little bit and then we'll go over to the console and we'll isolate these tracks and and I'll be able to further uh, drive the nail in on, on why I do it.
All right, here we are back. Um, I have the three tracks up here. In purple, we have the SCX25, which is the general rune mic, um, the one that everybody uses on a double bass, about a foot and a half off the, off the body. The second one is the 1280 that we put in the cavity. And the third one, the green one, is the 1250 uh, mic that we have uh, attached to the bridge to pick up the finger noise. So I've, I've uh, selected a little piece of uh, what I played earlier, and I'm going to go ahead and play it right now. And what you're going to hear is just the SCX25, which has a nice tone, and that's what we're used to getting on an upright bass. If you look just below it, see that M, I'm going to take away the M and we're going to bring in the cavity mic and listen to the enhancement and the fatness that that adds. Now it's out, in. Not a door slamming, that was my email. Um, so, upon hearing that, now let's add in just a little more of the finger noise. The backbeat slapping that I'm doing will come out right as I bring in the 1250 here. I hear a little bit of finger noise on there, but to me, the three of these together is just the ideal upright sound. And like I said, that that bass is a, um, it's a hard one to get to sound good, and that's why I picked this. And, and in case you're curious, I ran all of these through this Millennia HV3D, the, uh, the preamp right here, because to me, it's the, it's the cleanest. What you see going on up there is the vocal uh, that I'm running through the, the pre, but this is a real clean one. It's not coloring the sound in any way, like, like some of these uh, tube techs over here will do, or my Avalon stuff, you know, uh, that will color the tone in a nice way. We love that, and I usually do run my bass through here, but for demonstration purposes, I'm trying to do it as cleanly as possible without any, any or as little coloration as possible. So, we'll go back and... Uh, uh, SCX25A. Add the 1280, fatter. Add the 1250. That's nice. Now we'll run back here and, and try to pick up, uh, pick up that whole piece. And, and I'm just gonna, uh, uh, if you can, Joe, just zoom in right up there at the SCX25A and get all three of those. And I'm just going to go through and mute and unmute various combinations so whoever's uh, listening can, can uh, hear that. So there's all three. There's none. That's just the internal mic with the 25A.